Gertie, do you believe angels are only in the angelic realm? By Cynthia M. Long. Voiced by Phoenix T. Clark and C. Allen Robinson. Gertie, we need you, I exclaimed. Randy stared at me as we drove up and down the street to find a close restaurant parking spot. Who's Gertie? Gertie is one of my angels. One of her specialties is parking spots. Are you kidding me? Randy was now amused. Gertie, please, we need a close parking spot. Randy, please go back to the restaurant. We will find a perfect place to park the car. Randy glanced over, puzzled. Okay, let's try again. Randy replied. Randy and I drove right up to the restaurant. No parking spots. I inspected each side of the street. All of a sudden, someone pulled out right smack in front of the restaurant. Randy paused, acted surprised, and pulled in. Thank you, Gertie. I was pleased to show Randy the magic. (laughs) Thank you, Gertie. Randy chuckled. We got out of the car and entered the restaurant. We were seated right away. Randy curiously asked, Did you ask Gertie to help us get a seat right away? No. I grinned and was floored he even thought of asking such a question. We ordered a drink. Sin, tell me more about Gertie. Sure. It's a miraculous story, I responded. I began reflecting upon the beginning of the Gertie story. It had been a while since I repeated it to anyone and was trying to put it together in my mind before sharing it with Randy. Randy was getting comfortable in his seat. He took a menu and placed it in front of himself and started scanning it. Then he stopped and looked up. I know what I want. I wasn't very hungry or interested in looking at the full menu. Me too. I just want the soup special. Randy took my menu, placed it on top of his, with a welcoming grin to begin. Well, about 14 years ago or so, I went to a spiritual class and was introduced to a meditative technique to connect to my guardian angel. There were about 10 women gathered in a circle ready to begin the process. We started by imagining that we were sitting in the middle row in an empty theater. We were told that there was a lever on the left side of one of the arms of the chair. This lever would open the plush red velvet theater curtain when we were ready to see our angel. Just as the curtain began to open, we needed to ask the angel their name. I sat there for only a few minutes with my eyes closed. While turning the lever, the velvet curtain was drawn. I opened my eyes and I asked my angel's name. There before me was an older woman with her hair pulled back in a bun, wearing an old-fashioned dress. My name is Gertie, she said. I closed my eyes tightly, pressed the lever on the armrest, and the curtain closed. I quickly reopened it and hoped to see a beautiful young angel with white feathered wings appear. But there stood the older woman with an inviting smile. Perplexed, I again asked her name. My name is Gertie. I thought I didn't get the assignment. I closed the curtain disappointed and unsure. When everyone came out of contemplation, the sharing began. Well, I listened to the other ladies talk of names like Angelica, Felicia, Michaela, etc. With flowing dresses, golden locks, and angel wings. It was then my turn to narrate the experience. Gertie, I uttered. My angel's name is Gertie, and she's an elder. She was wearing an old-fashioned dress and her hair was pulled back in a bun. I knew I had made a mistake. I was remarkably disturbed. No one saw anything remotely close to what I had witnessed that winter eve many years ago. As I attentively (laughs) watched the women in the circle, a few chuckled, some were very amused, and others weren't so sure I had gotten the assignment right either. The evening ended. I walked to my car, shaking my head in disbelief. I was down on myself for a few days after that.